Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Books Beside My Bed video. For those of you who are new here, I film one of these every week where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading. And for those who are very familiar with the series, welcome back. My voice sounds really scratchy today. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not actually sick, so apologies for that. This is my reading week from the 6th until the 13th of October. That is a really scary thought that we are almost halfway through October. I don't even know what to do with that. This week I read eight books. I read three adult books, two young adult books, two middle grade and one children's picture book. I read a total of 2,484 pages and my yearly reading total is up to 302 books, which I am ridiculously excited about. We're going to jump straight into the reviews. The first book that I finished this week was, uh, well, this is a Mills and Boone intrigue duo two book thing but I read the New Orleans Noir story by Joanna Wayne so like I said it is from the Mills and Boone Intrigue line it is a 2019 release and I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars maybe 3 I can't remember it was around 3 3 and a half it is a mis sort of crime mystery story set in New Orleans and it follows Helena who has returned to New Orleans after the death of her grandmother her grandmother raised her and she's there to close out the estate and sort of get in and out and then be able to move on with her life. And while she's there, she runs into an ex-boyfriend, well, ex-fiancé, Hunter, who is a member of the NOLA PD. Hunter is in the middle of an investigation into a potential serial killer in New Orleans, and he becomes quite concerned for Helena's safety and the two sort of reunite and have a very difficult time initially with one another and then they discover that Helena's grandmother was perhaps more involved in the serial killer case than either of them thought and was perhaps closer to finding out the identity of who the serial killer is and it goes from there. It had a wonderful New Orleans vibe. New Orleans is one of those places I would really like to visit one day and this was just very atmospheric and just a quick and easy romance read. Then I read Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. This was one of my TBR game picks and the challenge that I had to do for this book was to write a book review and I have done that. It is on my blog. I will leave it linked down below. This is a 2016 release from Puffin Books and I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. I really struggled with this one guys. I know a lot of kids who would really enjoy this however I just found the main characters to be insufferable. The premise is that you have two girls who live in a private boarding school in, yeah, in England. It's the Deep Dean School for Girls and these two girls are friends, sort of, and they decide to start up a detective agency in the school and initially it's just sort of solving things like missing pencils and gossip and whatnot until one of the girls, Hazel, discovers a body in the gym and it is one of their teachers and the two decide to investigate what happened and who might be the possible murderer. The murder plot was fine. There was nothing good or bad about it, except that perhaps I wasn't all that invested in it. It's basically a lot of gossip about the teachers. But it's the friendship between Hazel and Daisy, who is the second member of the detective agency, which was problematic because Daisy is very, very manipulative. And Hazel at times seems to be beginning to, be un to understand that, and then at other times really doesn't. And I just think I would question whether or not younger readers would be able to tell the difference between a good friendship and a toxic one and this one I felt was quite toxic. It was fine, it was just a little slow and dry and I didn't particularly like the, fr the friendship dynamics in here, particularly between girls. Then I read Heart of the Cross by Emily Madden. This was sent to me by Mira for review, unsolicited, and I'm so grateful that they did. I actually really enjoyed this. It is a 2019 release from Mira, which is an imprint of Harlequin Australia and I gave it four out of five stars. It is a historical fiction set across three generations of women in one family. We do get all three perspectives of all three women at different points in their lives, but we have two, two main characters that we focus on for the majority of the book, and then the third one comes in a little bit later on, and while it's useful information, I didn't find that one as informative as the two that we meet at the start. The first main character that we follow is Rosie, and we fo start following her in 1959 as she moves from Ireland to King's Cross in Sydney to be with the man that she married a few years earlier and she thinks it's going to be a brand new start, a perfect life. They have a young son who her husband has never met and once they get there she finds that not everything is quite 
what it seems and her husband is not who she thought he was. But while she's in King's Cross she makes a lot of friends, she gets involved in the community including the owner of a brothel next door to where she's living which was really interesting to see how she connects with lots of different people in the community and how her views on things change over time as she learns what it means to become a member of the community. The second perspective that we get is of her granddaughter Brie and we meet Brie in 2017. She has come back to Sydney from Japan. She's a photographer, she travels around the world but she's come back because her grandmother has passed away and she's there to finish closing out the estate, to have organised the funeral, all that sort of thing. While she's there Brie begins to uncover all of the secrets that Rosie had left behind that she'd never told her. She begins to retrace her grandmother's steps and find out a lot about her early life in Australia. The third perspective occurs around nine, I think 1984 and it is Rosie's daughter Maggie and we don't get her perspective for a long time but it's quite crucial and it comes into the book later on because that's when it becomes relevant to the actual story. So the book itself has this really wonderful way of weaving the stories of all three women together as we, we as we move backwards and forwards in time to hear the next part of each story. So if you don't like books that jump around in time a little bit, this might be a bit of a struggle for you. And all I really know about King's Cross is basically the generalization of King's Cross in contemporary day. So this was quite fascinating to read about it and to read about the different characters that Rosie knew in the 60s and how she got herself out of quite a dark and dangerous home life as well. So. I highly recommend this if you like historical fiction and if you like there's a little bit of there's there's romance in here but it's not heavy on the romance so it's more the historical fiction side of it but this was great then i read heartstopper volume one and volume two both by alice oseman these are young adult graphic novels they are they were both published in 2019 by hodder children's books and i gave them both five out of five stars they are adorable and lovely and they will just make you feel happy reading them. They're very popular here on booktube so I won't spend too much time on them but they follow the two main characters Charlie and Nick. Charlie is openly gay and it is well known within his school that he is gay and he cops some slack for it at times but for the most part he's come to grips with it and so is his family and he's they're quite supportive and I think at the start of the book he's 14 14 or 15 and then one day his school goes to vertical home groups so you have multiple year levels in each home group and he is seated next to Charlie who is a couple of years older and is a member of the rugby team. The two strike up a friendship, they get along really well, Charlie develops a crush on him but thinks that Nick is very very straight. Nick convinces Charlie to join the rugby team, they spend a lot more time together and slowly feelings develop between the two of them and it's adorable. This started off as a web comic and I think you can still read it as a web comic. I have not continued on with the series, I'm just going to wait till the books come out, I'm going to attempt to have some self-control because I think these were really lovely to read in physical form. Then I read Adrift by Rob Boffett, this is a 2018 release from Orbit and I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. It is a science fiction book, it was part of my TBR game. This one I was to do a planner layout, I haven't done that yet, I will at some point, you'll see it in the future. And I was quite disappointed by this book because I wanted it to be filled with action and all sorts of things but it really wasn't. This is very character driven sci-fi and there's nothing wrong with that, it just wasn't what I was expecting it to be. The basic premise of this book is that it's set in the future, humans have gone out and colonised space and there are two groups of humans, there are the colonists and the, all the colonies and the frontier. The frontier is sort of still based to near Earth. And there was a massive war at one point between the colonies and the frontier. Now there's a whole lot of peace treaties and negotiation going on for mining rights on different planets and in different spaces controlled by both groups. In the middle of this is an old outpost mining station called Sigma Station. It has been turned into sort of a luxury hotel, space hotel, where people can come and go and travel and see the Horsehead Nebula up close. At the beginning of this book we meet one of the tourist guides on this station who is having her very is, and it's her very first day and things are not going to plan and then she gets onto one of the shuttles to take out a group of tourists for a flight around the station so they can actually see the size and scope of it and this shuttle is full of different people there is an alcoholic veteran pilot there are, there's a grandmother, there's a family with two young boys, there are two very suspicious characters, there's a businessman, and while they're outside floating around the space station, a ship appears and destroys the hotel, and so they are left stranded in space. And that happens in the first couple of chapters, and then it's like, I think it's about here where they're stranded. And then the rest of this book is what happens after, but they're stranded in space with no way of getting back. And so it's all this character dynamics of 
being stuck in a small confined space with one another, tempers flaring, all that sort of thing, which normally I would find fascinating, but because we had so little lead up to the characters and I had no emotional investment in any of them, it just, it fell flat. Like I would have preferred, yes, let's, let's have this hotel be destroyed around this point because I'll have had a solid chunk of getting to know the characters and feeling like I care about their stories. And then that's okay, I would, I would cope with that, but no. We had to become invested in the characters as we went and that was really hard when things were going wrong. So unfortunately this was just, eh. It was okay. I also read Monstrous Devices. Again, this was from my TBR game. And for this one, I had to design a bookmark and I have done that. I was gonna do something physical, but honestly, my week and my upcoming week is really, really hectic. So I've just done something really simple online and on PowerPoint because hey, you can make really cool little things quickly on PowerPoint. I have a video, I will upload sort of an, a sped up version of it today so that you can see it. Anyway, this is a middle grade book. It is a 2018 release from Puffin Books and I gave it three out of five stars. It is about a young boy called Alex who collects toy robots and one day he receives a very old, very weird looking toy robot from his grandfather. His grandfather likewise is a very weird, very mysterious grandfather with a strange skill set and he's not exactly what I would call a great role model. <laughs> he receives the robot and strange things start happening once he gets this robot. He's being bullied at school. He is quite strong in some academic subjects, but socially he's always been a bit of an outcast. His grandfather returns and then one night Alex is attacked by robots while he's sleeping in his bed. And so he and his grandfather escape to Paris to go and track down one of his grandfather's friends, someone who knows something about this very old robot. And the story sort of goes from there. They're attacked by the by a tall man, a creepy young girl, and a whole host of robots that do weird things. Eventually this story culminates in Prague, which was really cool. I, I mean, a middle grade book set in Prague just is fantastic. The ideas in the book were fun. There is a lot of the Golem mythology that is woven into this story, which I quite liked. And I know that I'm gonna have a whole bunch of kids at school who are really going to want to read this when I take this in on Monday. That's why I bought it, to read it, to see if it would be something that my class would be interested in. And I think they will be. While it was just okay for me, I think there are plenty of kids who would love this book. The final book that I read this week was a picture book. It is Franklin and Luna and the Book of Fairy Tales by Jen Campbell. Jen Campbell is an author here on Booktube and I absolutely love watching her videos and I love her Franklin and Luna books. This is book three. It follows Franklin, who is a dragon and his best friend Luna, or a young girl. It is Franklin's birthday and Franklin thinks everyone has forgotten his birthday. He hasn't received any presents or anything and there hasn't been a party yet. Meanwhile, all around him, the people in the local village who know Franklin and Luna, they're all preparing this secret party. So to distract him, Luna takes him to a very old bookshop and there Luna's, one of Luna's best friends, a tortoise named Neil, unwittingly unlocks a book of fairy tales and all of the characters get sucked into the fairy tale and there Franklin and Luna meet the three little pigs and the wolf, big bad wolf, and the hare from the tortoise and the hare and a whole lot of other characters. And it's just fun and entertaining and then eventually they have to escape the book in order to get back in time for Franklin's birthday party. So it's just a fun, enjoyable, easy to read picture book and I'm looking forward to taking this in and sharing it with my kids. So those are the books that I read this week. In the comments below, let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them, or alternatively, let me know what you have been reading and how it's going for you. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.